Esther Villar's idea is that masculinity has been defined over time by women. Women will tell men what's masculine. A chapter from the book, The Manipulated Man, right here by Esther Villar. So this book, I have it right here. As we've said, a man is considered masculine only after a series of manipulations on the part of women. A woman, on the other hand, is the author of her own transformation and produces femininity by means of cosmetics, hairstyle, and clothes. This femininity, synthetic in origin, consists of two different components, an emphasis on secondary sexual characteristics and distancing herself by means of masks. Woman makes use of various types of masks in order to make the difference between herself and a given man as conspicuous as possible. Again, I understand that that's a lot of like, that maybe doesn't make a lot of sense, but I'm going to pull it all together and it really paints a clear picture, at least in my mind. Okay, so she's claiming here at the start, right? And she actually talked about this throughout the book, that a man is considered masculine we are considered masculine, and we know this, right? If if you go by the MGTOW philosophy, right, part of that is doing your own thing, not living up to society's expectations of what men are supposed to be. And so um, Esther Villar's idea is that masculinity has been defined over time by women. Women will tell men what's masculine, uh, like, you know, serving and protecting your country, um, you know, uh, the letting the children or women and children off the lifeboats first, opening the door open for women, all these like naturally chivalrous, chival chivalrous things. Um, again, it's masculinity. That's what they'll use to, you know, you guys know like the shaming, right? They can shame you certain ways because you're not living up to the ideal. If you're not getting married, you're not being a man. You're not going to do the family the um the wife the white picket fence you're not being a man right they will hold men up to this masculinity that they create they create their own definition of masculinity however on the other hand she's saying that women control their own femininity so a woman can tell a man man what is masculinity uh you know what are you supposed to act like how are you supposed to behave but she also gets to do whatever she wants. And because she's a woman, whatever she decides basically is femininity. And we see this same idea right now with the whole um, idea where women are like, well, you better do, do this and this for me. And we're like, what are you bringing to the table? And the woman's like, uh, duh, me, myself. It's like that, that's, that's the idea is that she is bringing her femininity. That's enough. So she can create her own definition of what a good female is, a good, a good woman. That's why she can say, well, I'm bringing myself. That's enough to the table. But if you're not living up to her ideas of masculinity, then you don't fit. So again, she's kind of basically saying that men don't have a say in it on you know, a certain sense, right? Men have to live up to society's expectations, and then women can have their own expectations of what it means to be a woman. She's basically claiming, and here's where the lie that we're told, right? She's claiming that femininity um, is basically made up of two components. This is how, in her mind, women look at femininity. The first component is the sexual characteristics of the feminine sexual characteristics. And the second characteristic is by um, using masks. And it, we're going to get into what this means, and then it's going to come together, guys. <laughs> So those two components, right, of femininity. The first component was her sexual characteristics. The second component was being able to wear different masks to distance herself. And why that's important is uh, well, well, that's what we'll get to. So the first component serves to make her desirable to man. The second to make her mysterious to him. She herself thus creates the equivocal, unknown, opposite sex, making it easier for him to accept his enslavement. Okay, this is why it's so mind-blowing in a sense. Okay, so here's the idea, right? If Esther Vlar is actually correct, let's just say that other than reproductive organs, organs and then obviously some, you know, uh, testosterone and whatever other like that, like what if men and women are actually more similar than we're kind of told? 
just taking Esther Villar's kind of uh, definition of this. What Esther Villar is saying is that what women do is basically they become magicians that put up these smoke screens intentionally because a guy will have a really hard time accepting his enslavement. His enslavement is being the plow horse like we just saw there. A guy's going to have a really hard time accepting that if he were to peel back the curtain and realize like, wait a second, we're pretty similar, but you've just been like lazy this whole time. If he knew that she had capabilities close to his, but she just was not utilizing them and she was basically just using the guy to get what she wanted. Um, if guys became aware of this, then they would not put up with the enslavement. And again, guys, that is what MGTOW and Red Pill are. <laughs> guys becoming aware of the games and then going, wait a second, we've been playing this game this whole time? Playing by her rules this whole time? Why? Why are we playing this game? That is literally what Red Pill and MGTOW are doing. Exactly what women have apparently worked their entire lives to keep us from. So if a girl, right, if a girl can put up this um, mystery, this this allure, this thing that a guy can't quite figure out, then a guy is happy to just provide for her because he's just like, it's that feminine um, mystique. It's like, wow, I don't know, man, I can't figure her out, but she's a woman. Women, guys, we're never going to figure them out. So if you can't ever figure them out, then you're just happy to live your life not understanding them and just providing for them. But if you peel back the curtain, like Esther Villar does in this book, and guys figure out the truth for what it is, which again, a lot of guys are waking up to this, then you start to look at it and you go, wait a second, what are you bringing to the table, lady? What are you bringing to the table? And don't just tell me you're bringing yourself to the table. Because I'm asking, what what are you comprised of? What is you yourself? What are you now bringing to the table? When guys ask that question, girls don't like that. Because then, and Esther Villar it makes this pretty clear, then basically she Esther Villar says, well, other than sex, Esther Villar says, why would a guy want to be with a woman? She's not going to be able to bring anything to the table that he can't already bring because her whole idea that, right, guys have to spend their entire lives working, working on their character, working on things. Women always have that third option. So over time, guys just get to this playing field where she's like, guys would become bored of women if they didn't have this mystique around women. Like that's that's her kind of idea in this book. Thanks to the wide range of possible transformations each woman can offer a man, and a real woman varies her looks just a little every day, she keeps him in a state of constant bewilderment. While he is still trying to find yesterday's woman and today's, she gains time to achieve her own ends. She will maneuver the man into an untenable position, all the time skillfully distracting his attention from the stench of a rotting mind beneath the pleasing mask. Okay, so again... She's basically saying, right, and, and we know this about women. It's always been odd, right, about women. It's just, it's just a girl thing to do. They're always doing different outfits. They got a bazillion different shoes. They wear their hair in all different ways. Why do they need all these different outfits and accessories and all these different things? Okay, again, this is something that me as a man would never have thought of because I've never lived like a woman. That's why it was so interesting to read this book from a woman's perspective. Because she's basically saying the reason that women recreate themselves every day with new outfits, new hairstyles, is because the man in her life can never quite figure her out. The guy might get skeptical about something she did yesterday, and then all of a sudden, this new girl shows up today with a different hairstyle than yesterday, different, a different outfit, a different shoes. Think about that. It's like a magician putting smoke screens up. It's like never you'll never figure out my tricks because look at look at the new presentation I have for you today. I got a new card trick for you today. So don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about yesterday's card trick. Don't try to solve that cuz look at today. And it's like this constant smoke screen where they pop up in these different ways so men are just enamored. They don't understand. Wow, it's a different girl showing up for me every single day. So <laughs> the guy never 
sits back and puts all the clues together and starts to go, wait a second, I feel like I'm bringing a lot more to this relationship. She constantly changes so the guy can never figure her out. And when the guy can never figure her out, he can never actually sit back and like weigh pros versus cons. Wait, what is she actually benefiting my life versus what am I doing to benefit her life? It's like, think about that, guys. If you're always being entertained, how are you ever going to logically be able to use your mind to think about, you know, the, the rationale behind what's going on in front of you? So they're like these little magicians. <laughs> woman regards her natural self merely as the raw material of a woman. Not the raw material, but the end result has to be judged. Unmade up, without curls and bracelets and necklaces, women are not yet really present. This explains why they do not mind running around in curlers or with cold cream on their faces. It is not they at that stage. They are still occupied with the process of becoming them. They succeed with this sort of make-believe all the more easily because they are not hampered by any kind of intelligence. There you go again. Like I'm telling you, she was hammering that through the entire book. Just like women are not intelligent. Like all this, all of this stuff throughout. Again, that's from Esther Villar, ladies. Let's see this later. Uh, okay, so this is also another interesting thing. So again, this is like, how could I have ever figured this out either? Because I'm not a woman putting stuff on my face. But I've always seen that too with women. They have like the, the makeup on the face. Think of like the cucumbers on the eyes and they got that green whatever cream on their face. So Esther Villar is basically saying that a woman regards herself like she doesn't she doesn't judge herself or she doesn't think it's fair to be judged until she's done up. So if a girl has no makeup on and she's rolled out of bed, right? It doesn't count. <laughs> That's not her. That's why like think about that. If you ever try to take a picture of a girl when she's like not done up or whatever and she'll like put her hand over her face, or whatever. That's not her. She that like that's not her. She doesn't present that image to the public. So that that literally is not her. That part of her doesn't exist. Think about online dating now with like angle pictures and how they do filters and all that stuff, right? Her is not what you get every single day. Her is the finished product that she puts out after makeup and all that stuff. So you can't count like in her mind, like, no, no, you can't take a picture of me without my makeup on. This is not me. I am just a blob. I'm, I'm in the abyss right now, right? When it's like women go into the abyss and they're nothing. You can't find them. They're hiding until they put on all their makeup and then they pop out. And it's like, here I am. This is me. And it's like they go back into their abyss. I'm in my makeup stage right now. I, I don't even exist. And then they pop out with different makeup on. It's like, this is me now. It's like, the, it's like when they're in their abyss stage, it's like they're blacked out. No one, it's not them anymore. They're not responsible for anything. It's like a really weird way to look at things, guys. All right, we got a super chat from Mumtaz Shamsi. Thank you, man. Mumtaz Shamsi says, while well, you are plowing to make one thing happen for them, they already have next item on their wish list on their mind. Your mind can never rest. Very well said. Exactly. And uh, guys, okay, this is why I thought this was so interesting. And again, I only know what's going on in my own brain. So I, I hope as we continue to go this, you know, through this, this makes more and more sense um, as well to you guys because in my mind it's so clear right now. But doesn't this even correlate back to why we even see this right here where um it's like you know like the honey to-do list when you're when you're the husband you're going to constantly be working because think about this what esther Villar said right remember men have two options you either do it or hire somebody women have three options do it hire somebody or get a guy to do it well when they have a husband think about that their entire life they've learned how to use this third option so now you get a husband and they've learned this entire um their entire life how to get other people to do things for them think about why she constantly has the husband put to work she's like a master delegator by this time because she's been able to hone this skill throughout her life and so now this guy does it and he thinks that finally when i build the tree house in the backyard for the kids she'll get off my back boom build the tree house the gutter's not fixed <sighs> finally when i fix the gutter she'll be off my back hey we got to redo the floor blah 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 on and on and on 
right? Because she's she's a master delegator at this stage in her life. Don't forget, subscribe, like, comment, share the video, but definitely subscribe.